All right, I just put out a news video saying that Tanner Pearson will be out at least two weeks uh, and how that would impact his trade value. Um, and there's the, there's a jackhammer outside, that's why I'm filming from a closet. Uh, so, welcome to my closet. Um, and then right after that, Rick Dollywell, Brendan Matchler, everyone tweets out because Travis Green says that he's out for at least four weeks. Well, that made my video pretty irrelevant pretty quick. So. Tanner Pearson being out four weeks, let's talk about it. Uh, the trade deadline is April 12th, that is three and a half weeks away. This means Tanner Pearson will not play another game for the Vancouver Canucks before the trade deadline. This kills his trade value. Uh, in that video we went over how uh, in the last couple year, or last trade deadline, um, players that were on like 35 point paces, 40 point paces, even Ilya Kovalchuk on a 50 point pace, were only fetching third, fourth, sometimes following year fourth round picks uh, basically no value uh, for people around that 30 point uh, pace mark and that's where Tanner Pearson sits Tanner Pearson is at a 27 point pace um, 11 points through 33 games uh, 0.33 points per game of course um, he's not he has no value anymore um, the all the Canucks can do is try to extend him at a really cheap number they might be able to get a team to take a flyer on him with like a fifth at best, in my opinion. I just don't see uh, a good thing happening here. My, my estimate was that he would probably fetch a low third, um, maybe a high fourth, um, which again is not a lot of value. But my thought process was, look, with the expansion draft coming up, uh, the Canucks do have a lot of excess uh, protection slots uh, to use in that draft that they aren't using. Um, you know, you could... You could pick up a guy using a you know, third or a fourth round pick, and you could say, you know, we'll take this guy, we'll trade our third round pick f to a team for someone who they were going to lose to Seattle for nothing. Uh, and then the only person who you now can't protect is like Jay Beagle, um, so, or Antoine Roussel. So whatever, right? Totally fine for the Canucks. So if they can, ideally, get a third round pick was my hope. Get a third round pick for a guy like Tanner Pearson. Make a move on a guy who's maybe the eighth best forward on a team or the fourth best D-man on a team who wouldn't fall under the protection guidelines or who would fall under the expansion um, guidelines, but the Canucks could protect with uh, with the, ex the excess slots that they have. Um, but this isn't looking great. So an ankle injury, Tanner Pearson out four weeks. Um, that's what, 28 days? He probably misses like 14. Oh, and they do have a bye week coming up, so that's okay. But they, he'll probably miss like 11 games or so. Right, that can't be good for his uh, for his ex extension talks. That may be an opportunity for the Canucks to try to get him cheap, something like you know a year or two at a mil and a half to two mil. Uh, I don't think he's worth much more at this point. Being a 27 point player, that's a decent third liner, but he doesn't really play much of a third line style of game. So I don't know if that's uh, something that they'd want to even do. Um, his value just is dropping and dropping and dropping, and it's not good for the Canucks. And it also impacts the lineup, right? The Canucks, look, I've said many a time that the Canucks are done this year, right? They're not making the playoffs, um, and that dream is sort of over. But if the Canucks do somehow win back-to-back -back here against Montreal Friday, Saturday night, uh, then they're right back in it, right? That's what they need. They do need to win out against the Canadiens here, uh, and that would, I think, almost tie them in points. I think they're four down, something like that. And then the Habs would have a couple games in hand still. So it would still be an uphill battle, but it would get them right back in it. Um, and losing Tanner Pearson hurts that. Of course, they do have Jimmy Vesey, who might be able to slot in there. Uh, Pedersen is still out, so you're still going to have maybe Miller, Besser, Hoaglander as your top unit. Uh, Horvat now don't, no longer has Pearson, doesn't have Hoaglander because he's on the top line. So you're going to have a guy like Vesey maybe coming in on that second line to slot in this game. It might be interesting to see. Maybe a Tyler Mott. Um, not sure exactly what their plan is. I, I would guess maybe it'll be like Horvat, Vertanen, and Vesey. Maybe? We'll see what happens. Either way, uh, we'll have a post-game recap after this game against the Habs tonight, and I'm thinking of doing a live watch-along for the Saturday Night Hockey Night in Canada game. So if you're interested in that, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, anyways, that's all I've got. My second video of the day, because the first one has been deleted, uh, and hopefully we don't get some news that invalidates this one too. Anyways, I'll talk to you after the game tonight.